Welcome to the My Wish Sunday Race Club. With four race starts, we're going to start with our category four riders, then three, two, and one. Our riders are lined up in yellow, that is our category one riders, in green, our category two, in blue, category three, and category four in red. With our category four riders, as you can see, these are riders moving away. Luke Allport, no surprise to see him right up at the front, but looks like a nice big group going away. I mean, this is a big race field. More I points. am loving the fight for these green skin suits. It's brilliant, isn't it? Because uh, and, uh, I'm sure everybody's taking pictures when they're in them. Here at the moment in category three, they're working the way through. And I think there is a solo leader who's got a little bit of a gap up the road. Popovich from the clan team leading the chase behind. Then it's got the Martins, a bad and eke out. All are looking to come and get that gap. X100, who has put a little dig in. Uh, they too are on a short climbing section and making the most of that is the UAE clan team. Mr. X100 pushing the six. This is now in attack territory. It's gone skywards and he has opened up the throttles. He set the afterburners on. He's got to kick clear. He's got to take off and lead them, but he's not doing so. Martins is chasing down. Behind Mr. X100 has got uh, Stefan Van Elst working with him, I think, with him or hanging on to the back of him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I uh, love, yep. absolutely His love His battery's it. gone. He sees that banner. He continues to push. Nuki is the Category 3 winner today. He's your winner on the My Wish Sunday Race Club. Hello and welcome. It's my wish. It's Sunday Race Club time. It's qualifier race number three. And we are returning to Belgium. I'm going to say that again. We are returning to Belgium. I have been looking forward to this almost as much as I was looking forward to going to it for the first time. My name's Matt Payne. I'm going to be bringing you all of the action. I'm down here in the Full Speed Events Underground Studios with the one and only Emma Martin. Good to have you here, Emma. It is going to be entertaining for sure. And we have just watched what was an incredible women's race in Colombia on the Paso Alto. Now, we're not going to give any spoilers away. Please do go have a watch back. And the final few kilometers, oh my goodness, uh, absolutely brilliant. However, it's a very different course here in Belgium, and this is going to produce, I think, a different style of racing, but it's going to leave everybody on their knees. Well, you're right, Matt. We are heading to Belgium, and this is only the second time the men have been to Belgium. The first time qualifier at race two in September was phenomenal. It was a Vujasin Nudsen sprint to the line. Well, today, 45 kilometers of racing, 492 meters of climbing, which for the men is not a huge amount they're climbing but take a look at that every berg every climb you can find there's no cobbles today but there is in real life but uh, there is a lot of climbing so there are one two three four five king of the mountain segments but that is not the only climbs there are indeed two additional climbs that do not have segments attached to them and we have got two sprints along the way as well we are going up the Vulkenberg we are going up the Quermont we are going up the Passenberg and the Passenberg tips 12 percent that final segment up there the first one well that goes over 17 percent so there is something to look forward to right the way through this race today there is indeed, and our four categories lined up, ready to go. 
Well, you can see we're going to kick off with category four, as always. So five minutes between categories four and three, ten between three and two, five between two and one. But our starters, uh, it's going to be the uh, teams that are heading away in category four. Good to see the Red Furies, the Tour de Force, WTBR, Bauhaus Sport Club and the Anzacs all lining up for our race start. And our team's putting on rides as well. So please do make sure you jump on with one of those rides. It's a great way to get to know people out on my whoosh as well. And a big field of riders as well. I'm at, we're on about 10 seconds to go. The riders going to be ramping it up. Let's see how they get away from this start. And then we're going to run through this race field. So here in a qualifier race number three, category four are away. That field moving out from the pens in the autumnal colours in the trees around Belgium at the moment. Very typical of the colour of the trees out and around this area, out in the outside world. But as we head out and away from the pens, category four with a traditionally fast start. And this is a packed field of riders, isn't it, Emma? I mean... I know you're 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 laughing your head off in the background because guess what? Luke Allbot's on the attack <laughs> at the very start of a from race. From kilometer zero. Quite literally from kilometer zero. They're at this, but just run us through this race field as we uh, head out here. And you've got a lot of people with lots of notes beside them. That's a surefire sign that we've got some real big hitters in here. Yeah, so 49 riders on the start sheets today in category four, and you're right, Matt. Uh, the teams that are here are putting on some fantastic uh, community rides at the moment. Ola Warren, uh, Dadson, Francis McMurtry, Allport, Soberg, Lloyd, Katab, uh, you know, they're all in there, all putting those rides on. In addition to that, Abello, Finati, Noak, Astorga, you know, great, great riders in here. But Elos, Demanuan and Valles, who have been absolutely dominant in the top five to ten riders over the last few months, have now progressed to category three opening up the top end of category four a little bit. So it's going to be really interesting to see. It's not changed the strategy of the uh, fast start in category four, because take a look at the bottom left-hand side of your screen, 1.1 kilometers into the race, and there's already multiple groups on the road. And remember this start, it starts off flat uh, for quite a way. So it is going to be pretty quick, uh, whether or not they're on the attack. Remember we go through the Gen City sprint at two kilometers, that's between two and 2.3 K. It's not until 6K that we hit the hills uh, proper. However, uh, this start, Emma, it's like a junior road race. Oh, it, I always it, love the Category 4 it, It's. I'm not saying it's not great. I absolutely love it. It's great for us. It gives us, it gives us a really exciting start to talk about. And, you know, but what I do think is... It seems to me, in some ways, to be a real waste of energy. Well, let's put it this way. Normally, and I'm going to say normally because I've been doing a little bit of stats. Normally, this is the biggest race field. Okay? So, but of 49 riders today, it isn't. Category 3 is the largest race field today. But Category 4, you know, they love a bit of action. They like the fact, I think, that they are the first category away. It means they get five minutes of screen time on their own. So why would you not want to uh, be the rider off the front being talked about? Well, OK, so we have some absolute heroes on the front. Great to see the action. And a lot of these riders are the riders. I mean, let's face it. Everybody in every category matters. That's why we show all the categories. That's why we have this start where we get category four off first, then three, then two, then one, so that we can show as much of everybody as possible on the show and still not end up being here all day, all night and whatever, which is what would happen if we did them one after the other after the other. If we let one category go and watch them all finish, then we did the next category, then we watched them all finish, and then the next one, it would take a long time. Uh, whilst I might not run out of words or voice, I think uh, we probably would exhaust the team behind the scenes who have to cut from camera to camera. I can actually tell you how long that would have been last time we were in Belgium. Oh, you sad person. Four hours, 57 minutes. And that's just the winners. Yes, that's on the winning, winning time. time. 
if you add it together, and we, if we're going to do that, that would be everybody. just to get the first rider over the line in each category. Four hours. If we did it consecutively. Minutes. If we did it consecutively. That's a lot. Of anyway, let's move on, shall we? So, watching Lou Corport on category four, <laughs> leading the race on the left-hand side of your screen, it's those blue jerseys from category three. They are down in the pen, and they are warming up, ready to go. So some great teams in here today. It is, of course, the Colombian Andean team. And that is uh, Gutierrez Castro. It is Aran Arroyo. Uh, Munoz Geraldo. The uh, Colombians had a good day at the BMX, actually, yesterday. Uh, so please watch that. If you don't watch the BMX race soon from Argentina, do so whilst we're on the South American continent because it is absolutely awesome. And the Colombians on a fantastic day. So will they be inspired? We will see another massive race field, the biggest race field. Emma will take us through the race field once we've set off. But Emma, we're into countdown. We are into countdown and just seconds to go. We're in with Dorvin Elos at the moment, who's warming up there and away they go. Out of the start pen go category three. It's a huge field today. 56 riders on the start sheets. Two-time winner, Najuki. He's had two wins this month uh, in qualifier race number one and qualifier race number two. Can he make it three out of three? I think there's a few riders in here who are going to give him a run for his money. Neville Ross is here. Bogren is here. Quadrelli, Dyduch, uh, Pulgarin is here. So are the Kayan brothers. So is Ron Cali. So is Jack Staples and Stretty and Hoyos and Aaron and well we have indeed Elos, Demanuan and Velez coming up from category four. Now it's going to be really interesting to see how they hold their own in this huge pack today in Belgium. And you said it was the biggest race field. It, it is. is the biggest race field. It is one which is going to have a lot of draft effect. There's a lot of opportunity to sit in the wheels and to make the most and for category three, they have motored the way out of here and he is dropping one or two riders off the back of the group. I think with this start, one of the key things for me about the Belgian race route is you have to be out from the blocks on the start. And I, I know I, we, we, we enjoy ourselves watching the category four start, but I actually think if I was on this, I would be doing exactly what they do and I would be on the front because you need to be there. If somebody drills this at the front, you're going to be out the back so quick. And once that gap goes, you're not going to get it back. 6K to the first climb. No matter what happens afterwards, no matter how many riders you go through, you're not going to catch the leaders well, if you're not there at the base of climb one. Oh, I don't disagree with you. You need to be there or thereabouts. I wouldn't choose to be on the front. I'd be choose to be buried about a third of the way into that pack at the moment, keeping my eyes on the front. But this is a really interesting course because you've only got six kilometres of flat until you hit the first climb. So there's not a huge amount of combined climb in the 45 kilometres of racing today. Often we can see the men go 900 or even over a thousand meters of climbing in a Sunday race club. Today it's only 492, but they are really short, sharp, steep efforts. And that takes a certain type of fitness and a certain type of rider to do really well. Now, often when we've got a big climb at the end, we've got a fairly flat first 20 kilometers. As we saw in the women's race, they were on the Paso Alto in Colombia. Uh, very, very different here. Very, very different tactics because pretty much after that first six kilometers, it is absolutely dig in every single climb and pretty much treat the top of each of these climbs like a finish line. Yep, 100%. And there's not much flat in between. You're up, you're down. You're constantly, it's steep. It is really, really tough stuff. The uh, predictions before we even went and raced it for the first time were that it was going to be brutal. And that's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened in race one it's exactly the same predictions for race two of being here qualifier race number three in october on the my Wish sunday race club and already we're starting to see another push through here another rider just uh, squeezing on as we go through that 2.1k marker so in the middle of the sprint at the moment one rider going to go set a very fast time through here and take away top points in category three will it be a springboard for an attack because i've just seen another rider start to go across as we come out of the sprint 
Matt's favourite tactic sprint off the sprint finish yeah. because everybody's put a dig in <laughs> sit in and then rock it through at the end and look at the front of the race now it's opening up as so Ben Cook going through his move has provoked a response here and this is now going to do a lot of damage to people's legs because we come through Ghent City you can see they are going after the riders in front now. Kirk are putting a big effort to take that sprint. He's gone up the road here, and uh, they are now coming in and around him, mobbing over the top. Will everybody get there? Looks like Cy Bradley has made the uh, cut here. Cy on his first ride on the Money Woo Sunday race club last week. This week into ride number two. Will he be able to figure in the top five? We're in Belgium. We'll see if his training is going to pay off. He's been on those training programs. Category four on the right-hand side of the screen. Category three on the left. Well, great to see Cy Bradley returning. If you, like him, want to join us on the Sunday Race Club, head over to mywoosh.com. If you haven't already downloaded the app and had a ride on the platform, do so. If you're looking specifically for the Sunday Race Club, click on the menu find the events page you will find the, all the information you need about the sunday race club there uh, you'll find the technical guide you'll find the rules and regulations you will find all the information you need to register and get yourself on the sunday race club come and join us it is about time now to get on there and take a look if you want to join us in november we're qualifier race number three in october with one more qualification race to go before the final so our riders racing in their categories in categories four three two and one for category four our standard level uh, category we move up from there to three to two to one getting faster all the time and as uh, you'd expect the prizes get bigger the faster you go so a, a dedicated uh, prize list for each of our categories let's take a look at those now category four is our standard category 2160 aed for the win today in our qualifier race. Each and every qualifier race has that prize fund from 2,160 AED first to 432 AED in fifth place. Remember, of course, in the finals, we add in the extra spice, that extra bit of mix in there of the team's classification, just to get it a little bit hotter and get the action moving even more. And of course, add that dynamic of racing for each other. Now, as we move up through the categories, you'll see that the first prize in each category becomes the third prize in the category above. The easiest way to think about it. It's the only way I managed to remember all the prizes. 3,600 AED for first, 724 fifth. And of course, an escalation at the end of the month of, of that team prize uh, as well with the top prize in the team classification at the end of the month. 18,000 AED, so that end of the month final going to uh, really be uh, interesting to see who is in which team, because it does change month on month. From category three into category two, a step up again, 6,000 AED for first prize, running right through to 1,200 AED for fifth, and the team classification from 3,000 in fifth to 30,000 for first at the end of the month. So really key to get the riders for the riders to get themselves into teams and to get themselves organized and that is especially true if you are in category one because when we move from two to one it is a whopping fifty thousand aed for the team winning the final get yourselves in a team if you're watching this you're one of our riders sign up get in that team get them organized get on the discussion channel, get sorted out make sure you know where you're going where you're going to be on the teams if you're an individual rider racing don't forget of course it is each and every qualifier and in the monthly final 2000 ad for fifth 4000 ad for fourth 6000 ad for third 8000 ad for second and a humongous 10000 aed for first now we have the pleasure of riders from around the globe from many nations with many different flags that not all of us can recognize all of emma where are we heading today on emma's exchange well on emma's exchange we thought about going to euros because of belgium but i decided we'd done that a lot recently did think about doing colombian pesos because of the colombian andean team but then you mentioned argentina and i thought we have never done argentine pesos so have we're we in not? argentina no way. today okay so 10,000 aed is 952 
1,709 Argentine pesos. So hang on, so, so if I was one of the BMX racers I was commentating on yesterday and the day before on the UCI BMX, and we were in Argentina, in Santiago del Estero, I could spend how many pesos? 952,709. I love that. That sounds huge. Oh, it's the anyway, same as 10,000 AED. It is exactly the same as 10,000 AED as we watch the first ascent in the category four race of the first climb of the day. And it is splitting the race field apart as we head to the start of category two. Time flies when you're having fun. And it flies here on my whoosh category two. Oh, this team lineup. Is great. Wattage Wizards, the Hitmen, Beastmen, powered by Rose, Cafe de Columbia, and the UAE Falcons. Absolute class teams with glass riders. Grace, Simmons, Spratt, Ice, Hamden, Altadaji, Arimetri, Don Gatesman, Dekowitz, Howeiler, Von Haren, Mayer, and Angarita. Those are your team riders. We are ready to go. It's the Maiwu Sunday Race Club qualifier race number three and category two. It's time to put the pedal to the metal. It's time to go and hit the roads of Belgium. So our riders away, Krasnitz, the rider that we are in with. All these riders need to get their uh, foot down now. We know that with 6K of flat, we've seen Category 4 and Category 3 really fighting, staying. It looks like one rider just uh, caught napping on the start, having to kick back in. In fact, we saw Don do that last week in Category 2 and make his way right the way in very quickly. It looks like everybody's going to get back into the group. It's going to be one pack. Emma, take us through the individual riders and some of those team riders maybe who you think are going to figure up there because we have had movement in category. Oh, we have. Well, last time we were in Belgium, it was Dawson, Mendakowitz, Graves, Quintero and Spratt who were the top five. Today, it is a stacked field of 41 riders. Betty is here, Oviedo, Arengo, Ospina, Hernandez, Biarhead, Kranich, Kirchner, Guarin alongside a full lineup of Hitman, Graves, Simeon, Spratt and Yeast. Uh, the UAE Falcons are here, Our Rometri is really strong. Dont from the Wattage Wizards is here with Mark Gates. That's going to be interesting. Beast Mode powered by Rose Wellman. Dakowitz was right up there last time. Von Haaren has been on form. So uh, this is going to be a really interesting race to see who is there at the end. It is. I think it's going to be really interesting. You're going to have to be in it all the way through. And as you said earlier, Emma, treating each climb finish as a finish line in its own right and putting that kind of effort in there. And of course, with that accumulation of ascent, it's not huge, as you said. It is one of our smallest amounts of total overall climb. However, it yep. is going to be very, very interesting because for me, this is going to be harder. For most riders, this is a harder, harder route with much tougher uh, riding, much tougher effort levels, less recovery time between the climbs, more change, more variation in gradient. I think that's going to take its toll. And I don't think, uh, I think this is probably the hardest route we ride. Well, I think it's definitely an interesting race route that we're racing today. And, you know, these climbs featuring in the Tour of Flanders over the uh, decades so and that's really interesting and what i always think is fun is that the first one is a whopper the quarter keir climb okay that we uh, head to first 3.9 kilometers in length uh, the first section phenomenally steep at over 17 percent uh, then we hit a descent and then we go for another kicker before we actually get to the top banner of that climb Long climb, 3.9k in total, but of course not all of it uphill. And that change in rhythm, steep, steeper, down, flat, down, rise, steep, flat, steep. It really does test the rider's right, ability yeah. to respond. Being able to change your rhythm, being able to be have enough suplex, enough flexibility in your pedal cadence and your pedaling style is going to be really, really key. So a smooth, good pedaling rider, I think, will score here, which I like because it's one of those things, it's very easy to just get out of big gear and churn. That's not going to work on this course. I think you need to be able to, to rev through and have a really flexible rev range. Yeah, well, and also when you think you're, when, when you think you're at your 
max you've got to dig again because otherwise you are going to lose the front of this race you have got to be over the top of each of these climbs with the front pack if you want to stand any chance at the finish and that finish is really tricky from 36.6 kilometers you've got two classified climbs a descent and then another kick of over seven percent to the finish line going to be tough really interesting to see that uh, Ruben Dunt was the rider pushing through the sprint there in category two or will we see the same tactics from category one who are our last set of riders to go we're on 45 seconds uh, to go for them and that means that uh, we can bring you the uh, teams in here the Belgian Waffles team are back again Lionel Vujasin back for more Will he be able to take away a win? He was denied a win here on this course for the Belgian Waffles team when we're here first time. He will want his revenge. Out to stop him. Amongst all the other riders, we have the mighty UAE clan team with Michael Nusson, Pablo Popovic, the winner of last week's race, SS and Mr. X100. It's going to be a cracker. 37 riders in the mix on the start sheets in category one. Down in the pens as the final seconds tick down on the My Woosh Sunday Race Club. Away go the riders for qualifier number three, heading out to Belgium. They are heading out on to an epic course, which saw Nudson take the win last time by 0.1 of a second from Vujasin. Vujasin, though, has been on some form over the last three weeks. He's had a top five finish every week for the last three weeks, but Nudsen, well, he is always there or thereabouts. And it was Popovich, his teammate, who pipped him to the win last week. But you can never discount the other riders in this because there are some amazing riders on form at the moment. Van den Eek out, Martins, Cutler have all had top fives this month. Bjorklund is here, Kaminsky is here. Uh, Carradine has been riding really strongly. Talbot we saw ride strongly last week. And Pin Van Diemen was back last week as well and was absolutely in the mix too. Now, one of the other riders in the mix today in this pack is Ross Fawcett. Ross, well, one of the things I really love about Ross Fawcett is wherever he goes on holiday, he takes his turbo trainer with him and he joins us on the Sunday Race Cup. We've had some phenomenal photos sent to us on social media from Ross Fawcett uh, with his camper van, with his turbo trainer plugged in outside racing with a view wherever he is in the world and that has he's come from ireland but today the photos to me on social media at biking emma came not very far away from where the studio is from the peak district yeah across in macclesfield forest i think which is a great mountain bike venue full of hills that area yeah. uh, so uh, if you fancy any more at the end of this which i have absolutely uh, uh, no doubt that he won't, but when he wants to go out and recover, he's not going to find much flat around him. It is hilly. I mean, it's hill climb territory at it the is. moment in the UK where Ross Forsett is uh, pitched up riding on my wish at the moment. It's hill climb season and uh, hill climb season. I mean, we were out at the hill climb not all that long ago. We were at the uh, we were supporting one of the local events that we uh, uh, we uh, support looking at the riders, watching them and supporting the organizing team there. It was really, really good to see the riders in action and uh, i have to say um really interested to see the effort they're putting in in real life and one of the things that esports has done it's changed how riders describe their effort because it used to be in hill climb effort you talk about what gear not what watts per kilo now the riders talking watts per kilo on hill climbs what a change. Well, talking about hill climbs, we did indeed head over to look at and watch the uh, last hour and a half of the Monsal Hill Climb after the broadcast on the Sunday Race Club a couple of weeks ago. Now, the winning times in the men's field were between 1 minute 20 seconds and 1 minute 30 seconds. So, Ross, if you fancy an effort on the Monsal Climb that comes up to the cafe at the top, you can head over there in your Peak District holiday and uh, see what time you can set. Let us know. It was in Indeed, Andy Nichols, who won the hill climb uh, at Monsal this year. Uh, Andy Nichols, otherwise known as the top finishing GB rider in the Esports World Championships this year. Yeah. 
Very interesting power to weight, absolutely key. Uh, it's pure power though that our night riders need in category one in the uh, sprint going uh, through the uh, Ghent City sprint and indicated that we have now gone through that 2.3k mark at the end banner of the sprint with that UCI logo above because of course of my OCE sports partner for the UCI Hassan Sultan. Oh, that was an effort for it. Wasn't <laughs> Look it? At that. There is that was no a way that in any shape or form that Hassan Sultan didn't he go for that sprint. He wanted that green skin suit. To right and get a picture. Hassan, please get a picture. Send it to at Biking Emma or at Matt Fix Pain. We always love to see and what at it my looks whoosh. like. And of course, at my wish. It kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? No. We're no. So you can see the tags down on the bottom of your screen. It is at my whoosh on Instagram, on Facebook. It is my underscore whoosh on the uh, uh, platform formerly known as Twitter, not print. It is X. And if you want to know what that reference is to, make sure you watch the women's race. You can watch that back <laughs> at uh, my whoosh live on Twitch TV. And you can pick up all of the coverage there if you haven't watched it on that full technical as you watch live. And of course, you can also get it on the YouTube channel as well with me, Matt Payne and Emma Martin. We're here putting words to the action on my wish, backed up by an amazing team behind the scenes, bringing you all of the pictures, all of the racing, and of course, bringing you the my wish platform that allows us to see Michael Nuss and Pim Van Demon and Co. All in action as Tim Cutler comes across. So Cutler. He's aware that there is a rider down the road. And Tim Cutler, he said, hang on a minute, breakaway territory is mine. That's what I do. Pim Van Damon at the moment, though, the rider who is up the road. It's only a few seconds and a big squeeze here. Said Safrazad squeezing on. And uh, Said Safrazad out at the uh, Tour of Turkey um, during the uh, week this week. And really interesting, great result. Got to mention it whilst uh, we're talking about Tour of Turkey. Uh, Michael Fink. The Michael Vink, that same Michael Vink, stage winner and uh, Mounties jersey for the uh, UAE Emirates team and the UAE ADQ team. They got a stage win in the yellow jersey in China with uh, Kiara Consomi well, as well. So the team's supported by my whoosh out there nailing it. And of course, great action and an attack and a great racing here on uh, the uh, My Wish Sunday Race Club. Well, it's Tim Cutler that we're watching at the moment. Cutler, renowned over the last few weeks for uh, making the early action in this Category 1 race field. But it's Van Diemen on the front at the moment with Hoyos and Nudson. Cutler is there and a bit of a push just coming now from Van Diemen and from Nudson. Now, Nudson kicking at seven watts per kilo. They are not yet into this first climb. It's a big race field. And if you take a look on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can see one large blob with uh, Tim Cutler and Pim Van Diemen just off the front. You've got one yellow blob just behind indicating a rider off the back of the group but that is one big category one group 37 riders on the start sheets i'd say there's uh not much less than 25 riders in that group at the moment so a big race field in category one and everybody who is anyone is in there kaminsky boyorkland cowman vujasin jacobs x100 uh, good to see a few new names in there at the moment as well arnie jacobs is in there uh, is in there uh, for the first time that is fantastic to see so if you are new and you want to come and join us please do uh, we've got a number of riders who are here week in week out riding as well and that is fantastic to see so we are continuing to roll we are five kilometers now into this race into this category one race uh, and we've got one rider just attacking off the front on the right hand side of your screen on the left hand side of your screen sorry on the right hand side of your screen is our category two race and they are coming towards the top of the first section of the first climb as they sweep round this right hand bend they are then going to drop on to the other side they drop over the top there's a flat section another drop and then a final kicker before they get to the polka dot banner indicating the top of this category four climb it's 3.9 kilometers in length with an average gradient of two and a half percent 
However, the early part of this climb did indeed kick to 17%. They are up and over that now. And it's still a large group altogether. It's looking like one or two riders have just been dropped further back down the field. But this is a huge field of category two riders. And the strength and depth of this category two race is really something to see. It is indeed as the riders come dropping down. They're going to take the uh, little right. It levels as they come round this right hand turn. They will drop again and then it will rise up a big style. So just coming across this plateau at the moment, it will drop back down and then it will kick back up. And it's uh, blazingly sunny in uh, Belgium here on my whoosh. It's raining in uh, much of uh, Europe over the uh, course of this weekend. So if you were there at the moment in the outdoors, you would be uh, in a very different place as at the bottom of the course clear climb, the category one leaders are coming into the that climb so category one on its way in base of the climb coming in in with say safrazan at the moment as we come in to the base of the first categorized climb for category one the first time where the riders get the chance to thin this out by using the increasing gradient rather than using the big pack dynamics still i think one rider up the road leading this out uh, in front and the big pack chasing behind just going to take a little bit of a look it is still pin van demon who's got that gap it's 16 seconds and lionel vajassin i think he's going to make this tough for everybody because everyone will respond when lionel vajassin is on the attack he is such a marked man in this field a real star of esports and cutler goes straight over the top so cutler vajassin Forsyth, kaminsky tolbert theme kalman and noran Mare, a who's who. Notable by their absence is any bigger strength in depth from the UAE clan team. Just see Nutson start to move up now. Going to be very interested to see what happens as we move through. This is a brutal course. We're on to the uh, second part here of the, uh, sorry, the first part of the course. You can see that they're on to the ascent and Emma. This is about to get really steep. Yeah, it is about to get really steep. And I'm wondering where the Pin Van Demon is going to be brought back in because I think that is still a lone figure out there. Up the front as the rest of these Cash Greet One men continue to charge up this climb. The power coming out of them is phenomenal at the moment, but they are all more than capable of this type of power for this length of time. And that is what is so wonderful about these four race categories on my whoosh. They are matched by ability and it gives such close racing you can see a little bit of stretch on the group there one or two riders in fact Hassan Sultan the rider who has that green skin suit just off of the screen at the moment he's the rider in danger uh, with the SS as well. So SS and Hassan Sultan just off the back of the group at the moment. Jakob Bjorklund also in trouble. But X100 is the rider towards the back of the group with Martin Harburg. Uh, really class riders there. You see the three of them, Frank Thompson too, just off the back of the group. They need to push. They need to push now because they need to be with this group going over the top of this time. It is not much longer big push required at the back of this group to stay on so here we go this is coming into the top of part one of the cuts key you can see that climb you can see the ascent in the belgian hills here we're in with bim van diemen he's been brought back in the uh, duration of part one of this climb alone his huge gap absolutely disappearing evaporated with the heat put on to this race at the front by that move by the jesse coming in Everybody responded. This is coming through at pace. They're about to catch one rider from category two. So uh, just uh, making the uh, catch. They're going to go flying past, I suspect, given the pace they're going. I think that was Santiago Hoyos, who's uh, just seen them come flashing past that yellow streak of category one leaders over the top of part one of the court here. We're going to move into part two. So descent, right hand turn, slight rise of levels, drops again, and then we're into part two of the quarter kid, the first of the five categorized climbs, six climbing segments that are out there, so four, five are categorized, there are six big segments, and if they could almost say it was seven, we could literally have listed every uphill part of this course 
as a climb segment. That is how steep it is. That is how tough. And there is so little respite on this course that these riders are really going to feel this. So down on to this slight platform, this levelling, this plateau, as they, uh, they come onto the shelf, if you like, wow. at the side of this mountain, then a drop down. Emma, this has broken a number of riders away. It has. It has. Big, 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 big people out the back. Definitely different. It has indeed. And uh, the riders using this downhill and flat section to drop their heart rates dramatically before it kicks again. So the group in the category one race decimated pretty much in half, down to about 13 riders, I think, in that leading group. On the right hand side of your screen, that is category two. They are further up the uh, race field. The next climb for them will be the Volkenberg, but that does not come to 18.3 kilometers. So a fair bit of transition for them at the moment and they are in a large group that's a larger group than the front of this category one race now it is indeed now here we go we are in the base of the descent with category one here we go take the left hand turn that wall rising up in front is the start of the climb part two coming up this is nasty 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 stuff and this is going to hurt oh, i can feel the pain coming through the screen here because this is about holding the pace of that group this is going to be hard such strong riders such tough terrain if you're in here boy you know you're going to be in a battle to the finish well Talbot's heart rate has gone from 125 to 168 and it continues to climb 172 and upwards as they gradient gets close to 10%. I think he's going to have done at least 60 beats growth in this climb. That is incredible in the space of the climb. His heart rate rocketing up and look at this. Another rider at the back just starting to uh, be in uh, trouble. Uh, we're just going to take a look. Looks like Nudson just about on the back. Pim Van Diemen, it might be who is in oh, trouble behind. It's churning it through is. so quickly. Van I mean, Diemen, Harburg, no. all off wow. the back there. So this is absolutely doing some damage at the moment. Riders being dropped. This is the first climb. Admittedly, it is the steepest with that first section going up over 17%. Uh, it is also the longest. Yeah, but... It's not over yet. We've still got this final kicker here. As we come in to this section, you can just see it's going to kick again. So here we go. Another big move. Here. It's through Jassin on the front. 10 watts per kilo. We said he was on form and he is absolutely bossing it today. What a rider by him. He's clear on the front. He's got the gap. This is Vujasin. Remember, he was really tall. It was great to uh, uh, chat to him afterwards. It said that he was uh, really well sore about that. He really was desperate to take that win on his home turf. The Belgian in Belgium wanted to get to the top. He goes over the climb first. There you can see he has got the fastest time. He will be in uh, the uh, skin suit of climb leader. But remember that the positions equate to points. Those points will be totaled up across all of our climb segments. And that is what gives our riders that uh, polka dot jersey. But it is going to be for Jassin, and that is going to be a target. You can see him just in front here. Who's coming across? The man who beat him, Michael Nudson, has come across to the Jassin. This is what is great about this course. Oh, Kaminsky's coming. It forces coming. them to work. You cannot take it easy. You can't rely on closing people down later. You get gaps early. They could be in there and expanded to the finish. You, it is so, so difficult. You've got to be on it the whole way through. Look at that. Look at the kicking coming from Kaminsky, Martins and Norens behind Zatner. 11 watts per kilo. Zatner does not want to miss the boat today. Absolutely kicking and they are coming back thick and fast. Take a look at that. I think we're going to see one rider, though, not make the juncture at the moment. One rider's not had the kick to go. Uh, we will see who that is shortly. But Vujasin putting the kick in there. Nudson closing it down. It's Arnie Jacobs, the new rider. 
who has not made the juncture. Oh. They are back through. Look at that on the bottom left hand side of your screen. You can see the damage being done. There's a big group actually coming behind. Uh, can that group make the catch on the rest of this course? That is going to be really interesting. I think they're going to sweep Jacobs up, but this is the front group and that is down to 12 riders now. So 12 riders on the front. We've got uh, Arnie Jacobs behind. We have got riders like SS, a super strong rider for the UAE clan team, not right up in the very front of the mix. So that is category one, which has exploded across the court of Kia. And that massive field of riders absolutely plunged into complete chaos by the climb. The strongest have come out at the front. The riders in category two, well, they are currently at 15 kilometers. And that means they've already gone there through the uh, Tyson Hoven uh, Molen sprint. The Tyson Hoven Molen sprint is the windmill sprint uh, going through. So that's uh, on the way past that uh, windmill. And they are through there. Their next climb comes at the uh, Volkenberg. And that is at 18.3 kilometers. They've got to make the most of this section of course but it is a small group at the moment don simmons Dakowitz, along with orango in there Carsten mayer has made this group a spinner across they should go they're about two seconds further back now michael nudson pushing on at the front here of the race in the category one really keeping the pressure on this group He's not going to make it easy for them. And I wonder whether he's a little worried by the power of Vujasin in a sprint kick up those steep climbs. Wow. And he's looking to keep it hard all the way. Well, Nudson, really interesting. Normally keeps his powder dry till about two thirds of the way into the race. Uh, yep. But normally we've got a big climb at the end, which <laughs> absolutely suits him down to the ground. He is a phenomenal climber, is Nudson. This is a very different type of race, and we did not know how it was going to go last time. Nudson still showed his form, but everybody is showing their form at the moment. As we said, Vujasin, Nudson, Van den Eekhout, Martins, Cutler, Popovich have all been on the podium in the last two qualifiers. You know, Safrazad and Noren also made the podium in the September final. That is a lot of racers on form in category one. It is, and just looking at that sprint times through there, you can see that Don Mem and Simmons were on the attacking category two through that sprint section. That was that pursuit group that we just saw go through. Really interesting. Category two and one all over it at the moment. Uh, remember, of course, we do have four categories in action. We're going to try and bring you as much as we can from every single group. But the action is incredibly thick and fast at the moment on this course. Mr. X100 now on the attack. I think for him, attack is the best form of defense here. Offensive yep. riding by Mr. X100 because Mr. X100 can hold a high watts per kilo for a long time. But where he struggles normally is when there's a massive kick going into double digits in terms of watts per kilo. So the 10s, 11, 12 watts per kilo tends to distance Mr. X100, but he can hold a high pace of five, six watts per kilo for longer. Now, that means that he needs to get in front because if he tries to do that from behind, it's not going to work on this course. He's got to go in front and then keep the pace high all the way through. He won't want it dropping to two, three watts per kilo. He'll want it to stay hard. Now, Vidal Mare has seen the potential of this. He is coming across the gap here at six watts per kilo. He's got a little bit of a gap back behind him to Martins. A gap behind him that looks like Ramirez, uh, Fawcett, uh, Nair, all in the group behind him it's only fractional at the moment remember this is that run across we saw the category two coming through this self same section as they came around that turn I'm absolutely loving the fact that we're getting thumbs up uh, from our riders on the way through. I tell you something, Mr. X100 on there, he's got those controls dialed because he's able to do that. We saw him in the rewind stretching his back out because the battery was running out. We've just seen him giving us the thumbs up. Uh, great to see that as fit out meh. And uh, Mr. X100 comes through. Vidal Mayer with the yellow cap. Uh, Mr. X100 with those red socks and the red and black helmet on, making the way at the front of this. A group behind, say, Safrazad line with Justin Yo and Nora Michael Nudson there. Now, Emma, these riders have got three seconds. 
is this going to nullify the racing, do you think? Because it's just eased everything off. You've got a nice established pattern. People know what to do here. Two riders in front. We know who they are. We'll get them back on the climb. We don't need to chase too hard right now. Well, you need to watch out, you know. I mean, we talked about it in the women's race. Never make an assumption. Never yep. make an assumption oh, about what's going to happen because things don't always play out the way you think they are. And X100 and Vidal Mare here are two up time trialing away from the group. And uh, Nudson has decided that he's going to chase his teammate down. No, he's not. He's bridging across. That well, is not. He's not because he's jumped clear. Look at the gap. Across. Look at. He hasn't, well, he hasn't got the gap. I think Vijas is going to try and go with him because Vijasin is absolutely marking him because Vijasin is going to mark Nudson absolutely. And if Nudson makes a move, he's going to bring the rest of the group across because everybody else will be marking Lionel Vujasin and they won't let those two go clear. So as uh, Nudson kicks on, Vujasin pushes and then look, the pace picks up from everybody behind. Uh, so Savrazad Fawcett Martins at 5.1. The chase is now on behind. They don't want to let that gap get too too big because whilst they might catch them back at two or three seconds they're not going to necessarily catch them back at seven eight nine seconds or at least not as quickly as they might want no and i think in uh, and in that uh, in that assessment they've been brought back caught and uh, it has regrouped so as fast as we can talk about it, the riders are changing the dynamics in this race. And in part, I think this is lining up for the next of our clients. This comes at 18.3k for the category one riders. But as you can see, we have four race categories. Now, categories three and four, leading groups in there still all together. Category two is still a very big pack, as you can see on your screen now. And category one, a smaller group. So really interesting to see how these riders are progressing down. The different distances, category four at 25.3, category uh, Three, they are at 23.7, 18.9k covered for category two, and 16.6k covered for category one. And again, more action in category one. It is the most aggressive category that we've seen at the moment, certainly on our screens. The uh, team trying to bring us all the pictures from all of the racing and all of the action simultaneously. Well, as we've dropped back in with Category 1 race field, there's another attack going off the front here. So uh, that indeed is X100. He's going again, you know. So as X100 pushes on, he's got three seconds now. He's really not happy for this group to sit and rest. And the pace they're moving at really is a bit of a rest at the moment. So Nair, Safrasad, Talbot all sat in this group. Small gap up the road to X100. But at 17.1 kilometres into this race, they're about 1.2k from the Volkenberg. That is going to be the next climb they face. Now, one point three kilometers so less than half the distance of the course here with an average gradient of 4.3 percent so we're not going to see that very very steep 17 percent segment but it will get steep last used in the tour of flanders in 1996 last used in the tour of flanders 1996 that's a long long time ago way way back way way when um that was classic era. That's the era of things like uh, aluminium rims and steel frames. Very different to today's bikes, today's riding and today's riding style. And at the moment, the man in style is Michael Nudson. He is absolutely moving fast here. He's working well. He's gone clear of Mr. X100 oh, and Lionel Jesse. Now, look at this. Nudson has gone. Who's going to respond? It's not going to be his teammate, who I think is just going to sit on the front of that bunch and not pull them back. And as they come into the base of the climb, this is dangerous because we are about to hit climb number two, the Falkenberg, Emma. This is going to be, is it going to be as classic as it was back in 1990, whatever it was, in the, the actual Tour of Flanders? Well, 1996 that was, and I'm not sure what tactics they used back then, but the 1-2 uh, feint from the UAE clan team uh, to get Nudson down the road. Absolutely phenomenal tactics, but can Nudson hold it? Martins and Talbot are at eight watts per kilo. They're going to use this climb to catch, and they are going to make the catch because they are pushing on this. 
this is just a short climb. It's short enough to dig deep and pull Nudson back, particularly when you've got the quality of Martins and Talbot, Cutler and Nair, Noren and Kaminsky in this field. They are pushing and they have brought him back in as they move their way up and through the second King of the Mountains of the day. Wow. I was just uh, having a quick uh, look there, Emma, at the 1996 Tour of <laughs> Flanders. I knew it was a good Excellent. addition in my head. So, here we go. Top. This is a cracking top three. Third place, Johan Museo. Oh. Top spot, Michele Bartoli, one of the classiest riders on a bike. In fact, it was a one-two for the MG uh, Magnifico Techno Gym team with Mo Museo of Mapai in third place. Absolutely class race. Please do go look it up because I, I know for a fact, I, I can replay this in my head, it was classic. And it was played out in very interesting tactics as well by the uh, team, as well by the MG uh, uh, Techno Gym team. So going to be really interesting to see if it, it plays out like that this again. I mean, that's the era of uh, Mapai being like the, the dominant team. And we have the UAE clan team being the dominant team. And yet people wow. were still taking it to them. A team that was maybe not as big in, in, in terms of resources and maybe in terms of having that regular time at the top of Bartoli class act managed to stick it to them on a course that was packed full of hills. So really reminiscent, very, very apt that that is the uh, last time that the uh, uh, that we saw the Volkenberg in the Tour of Flanders. Well, a phenomenal, I'm going to put my teeth in. A phenomenal history on the Tour of Flanders, creating history now on the My Rouge Sunday Race Club in Belgium. This is the second time the Sunday Race Club men's race has been run in Belgium. They're over the Volkenberg climb now, and this pack are all still together. So as they go across the water at the top of the second climb, they have one, two, three more classified climbs to go before they kick to the finish line at 45 kilometers into this race. Well, Cutler is the rider pushing on on the front with Vujasin. These two are now leading this. Nelson is the rider coming across. Nelson's doing an awful lot of marking today. He really doesn't want anybody getting away from him in Belgium. He's pushing on and the rest of the pack now slow it in coming across, but they are indeed coming across to form one group again. So the riders on the way round going over the river crossing here. And as you can see at the top of the Valkenberg, Vujasin with the fastest time once again. Flying through there, he is the quick strider. Two minute, 18.938 second time for him. So with Justin Cutler, Mistakes 100, Talbot, Martins, Nair and Noren with Kaminsky immediately behind him. They're your top eight riders through with just over 1.3 seconds separating the top eight riders here today. It means that we are going to continue to see Vujasin in the polka dot skin suit. As you can see there to the left of his name, Johan Noren just uh, tracking the back of this uh, group, just uh, working his way up towards the front now. That category one group pretty much all together now. In category four, at the top of the climb, you can see Luke Allport with a little bit of a gap here, just taking a look over his shoulder. He's got the polka dot and the green skin suit at the moment. A reflection that he's been one of our most aggressive riders. And this looks to me like they're on the Eichenberg climb, Emma. They are indeed. You know, this was used 40 times in the Tour of Flanders between 1956 and 2015. Uh, phenomenal climb. Short. Uh, 1.6 kilometers with an average gradient of 4.3 percent and it is indeed a bellow who is pushing on towards the front at the moment dadson is chasing hard so is mcmurtry and allport they are all in here there's a bit of a stretch on the group but it's not a huge stretch on the group i would expect that stretch to come back together in this group reform whether we lose one or two riders off the bat well that may happen but i think most of this bunch are going to come back together again and it's a good sized bunch in this category four race so as they come up and over the Eichenberg climb, well, I'm just trying to take a little look and see how many riders are in this group. I think that's 13 riders at the front of the category four race field. 
So Category 4 over the top of the Eichenberger on the descent on the far side. On their way in to the Eichenberger and on to the climb come Category 3 immediately behind. Now, Eichenberg last used in 2015. Top 3 in the 2015 <laughs> Tour of Flanders. Come on then. Now, I'm not sure that this counts to be quite a classy, but we will see what you think here. We have got, in first place, big sprinter Alexander Kristoff. Ooh. from Norway. Yeah. Second place, Nicky Terpstra. Mm. Good rider, riding uh, from the Netherlands. But third place, I know I'm just going to like this, from Belgium, an Olympic road race champion in the shape of Greg Van Albemarle. Wow, there you go. So does it get any faster than that? Well, I would argue it probably does because I can think of an even better edition of the Tour of Flanders. Let's see if it comes up on the way through. We're on our second edition of uh, the uh, My Wish Sunday Race uh, Club it goes to uh, Belgium as part of the uh, qualifiers at the moment. Can you imagine a final on here with all of the team tactics? Well, as well? Just, It'd be carnage. Let's <laughs> be just brilliant. be explicit here. The second edition of the men, the women have that been there very once. True. Indeed. Second edition for the men. Women have been there once. I predict the women will go again shortly. Really? Yes. <laughs> I don't think Emma's got insider information either. No, I don't. But uh, Dont is at the front of this race for with Simmons and Arengo. Kirchner is still here. So is BR Head and Orlando. Mendakowitz is here as well. This is a who's who in the Category 2 race. Well, they are coming up for 25 kilometres, which will give them 20 kilometres still to go in Belgium. This is the Category 2 race. And we're seeing big packs still at the halfway point in all of these race fields, Matt. We are, and it's. I'm surprised that there is as many riders in there. You know, I just didn't expect to see this volume at this stage, given the climbs that we're on. At the moment, our Category 2 riders are on the way over. Now, this is a climb that is not a categorised climb, and yet it's still brutal. You can see the damage it's, that he's doing at the moment. Arengo right in here, Sprat in here. We've got Oviedo, we've got Spina in, Mendakowitz. I mean, these are the riders we know are going to be right up at the front of the moves, pushing the pace on. And this, I mean, in terms of profile, it's not too dissimilar to the rest of the climbs. No, it's not. Um, and actually... I'm going to give game away here a little bit. It was a classified climb in the women's race field, but let's remember the women race 10 kilometres less. Uh, and uh, it is 1.4 kilometres in length with 4.3% average gradient. So it is not far off a similar profile to the Volkenberg. Okay. Interesting. So similar profile to the Volkenberg. Okay, so the men's race a little bit further ahead, of course, in Category 3 than the Category 2 riders. Category 2 riders on that uh, break line of the Eichenberg. Category 3 going over the top of the Eichenberg and now very quickly into the descent. Category 1, they are actually on the way in to the uh, pre-climb. Do we actually have a name for the climb, Emma, that is the one before the Eichenberg? <laughs> uh, so on the women's uh, profile, it is the Eichenberg Hill before the Eichenberg okay. climb. So we can now call that the Eichenberg Hill. Let's call it the Eichenberg Hill. Right. If only just so that I get less confused. So we've got the Eichenberg Anything Hill and we've got Matt the Eichenberg confused. climb. So Eichenberg Hill coming up for category one, not classified, not going to count for points. However, it is tough. And because it comes immediately before the Eichenberg climb itself, it could do some damage. The riders on the right of your screen, they are the Category 2 riders. So they are descending from the hill and heading to the climb. Well, it could indeed do some damage. And I think the interesting part of this is the descent off the other side before the actual hit into the Eichenberg climb itself. Because we know a lot of riders, uh, when you get to a descent, go, <sighs> take a just breath. Just do that again. <sighs> take a okay. breath. Drop the heart rate, get ready for the next attack. If you change that tactic up, as I know and we well know you can very easily on this esports platform on the Sunday Race Club, and you attack on the downhill, you get your momentum up really fast, you can get away from the pack. If you can get that gap on the downhill, extend it on the uphill, you are on a winner. And this is that downhill. This is the descent down. You can see there is very little transition time. There's not a lot of time to reset. As you go underneath the arch, the uh, gradient drops below a 1% descent. However, 
it's soon going to go up and the riders can see that coming in front of them already so as they're about halfway through this transitional lower section you can see as we hit the banner with the uci logo across the front of it that is the start of the eichenberg climb itself so They've transited from the hill to the climb of the Eichenberg. This is a categorized section on this climb. So basically, they've gone up one side, they've gone down, and then they're coming back up another road. There are actually about four ways up the Eichenberg, well, if I remember correctly. Yeah, well, currently the uh, fastest time up the climb at the moment is Colin Cahan from the um, Category 3 side. Bradley in two, Albin Bogren in three, Justin Roy in four, and Tom Gakes from that Category 3 race field in five. The fastest Category 4 rider, well, that's Dexter Abello up there in 32nd place at the moment. So 32nd place for Abella at the moment. However, I think all that will change as this group comes through. This is the Category 1 race, and they are putting the pressure on. They nearly had dropped a couple of riders coming up to the top of the hill here. But everybody fighting to stay in the wheels. But this will be working the legs over. They are not taking this easy by any stretch of the imagination. Said Safrazad kicking at 9.8. 8 watts per kilo over the top of this climb. He is starting to do a little bit of damage. One rider, I think, has just struggled to stay with the pace of that group. Yeah, and that. this is how you get distance because you come over the top, you've gone into the red, and another big kicker going over the uh, top there. I'm sure that was Nudson who went over the top there. He doesn't want this pace to drop down. If they can deposit another rider off the back, I mean, it increases the uh, chances that they're going to be in the run into the finish. Here we go. This is the descent down. This is the run for the uh, transit into the Eichenberg climb proper. Martin Martin's tucked in here. That heart rate uh, rocketed <laughs> up mid 170s there. But this is brutal. Well, it is brutal. And you can see one or two riders absolutely coming off the pace there to try and get a deep breath of recovery. Theme dropped his watts to one watt per kilo. I think he needed a breath. X100 has dropped as well. The pace has come off. They had tried to attack over the top. Safrazad pushed on. Everybody went with him. Now they're taking a breath. They're drawing a breath. They are preparing themselves for the next attack because this is attack after attack after attack. And that is what this Belgium course does. It is absolutely a course of aggressive climbing, short attacks, deep breaths, drop your heart rate, go again. So we are effectively halfway through the climbs, but we are making our way in to the 27.4 kilometer distance. So another 600 meters and we'll be into our next climb, the climb of the Eichenberg. This is going to be tough stuff, and this group are really attacking each other. Really, really aggressive riding. We are finding the riders are really having to do a recovery and another kick. It is like a constant interval session for these riders. They are at the base of the climb, at the top of the climb, because this climb tops out at 29 kilometers and at 28.8. The leaders in category two on the right hand side of your screen are pushing over the top. Is this a portent of what is going to come in category one? Category 1 hit the base of the climb. The banner comes into sight for the leaders in Category 2. The screen is full of red chevrons in Category 2. Can they deposit anyone off the back? It's a long line of riders coming over. And it's about pushing not just to the banner, but into that descent. Because if you're going to break people, it's going to break now. And there is a gap starting to form. We are starting to get two gaps Opening up now, I think it's certainly two groups. It may be three. Uh, we're going to see if they're going to come back together again. Well, they need to push. They need to push hard because the second they drop off this descent, they've then got uh, over six kilometers of flat section before they hit the finale that is the two to three climbs before the finish line. So this group really need to push. You really do not want to be dropped now because this is the period where you can sit in, you can take a breath and you can prepare yourself for the finish. If you are not in this group, if you are dropped off the bat, you are not going to be in there. So Gates, Orengo, Orlando, Van He, Ospina, Simeons, Kirchner, 
all pushing, all trying to get into this group because they don't want it to be one long line. And at the moment, take a look at that on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. This is Philip Graves on the front. Arengo and Van He are there as well. They are pushing this because they do not want all these riders to go through. It's a big, big group of category two riders. And they are now on the other side and on the flatlands. They want to motor now because they don't want the 20 riders that went over the top of the climb together to be together for the final two climbs of the day. Well, let's see if that should be replicated in category one. It's already a smaller group, and it is looking like we are seeing at least a one or two riders off the back. Now, are they category two riders? But I think there's a category one rider in the distance behind there. Just trying to take a look at it. It's Christoph Thiem. Thiem has gone. Wow, well, that's a big surprise. We know he's an absolute class act on the bike. But today he has been distanced. So that is one more rider who's not going to be in the mix. And everybody fighting to stay on. Where do you choose to push here? When do you choose to squeeze over the top? You've got to get your timing right. You want to make it as fast as possible over the top of the climb, but you do not want to go into the red before the top because you will get blown out the back of that group and you're going to be in trouble. This is the push now. This is the squeeze. This is where they're going to lose a theme because they will still have the strength in their legs to accelerate. And I think theme will start to go backwards off the back of this group. And can they shed anybody else before they go into the descent? It's still over 5%. Now 4 It's going to start ticking down as we run into the uh, gantry. The UCI uh, climb banner at the end of this ascent. As we come up over the top of the climb. It's Zach now we're in with at the moment. Nez heart rate right up at 174 beats per minute. He's revving as well. 93 revs per minute. He's working. There's over 400 watts coming out as he goes through underneath the banner here. And that gap, it's a theme. Well, that wedge was put in. The thin end started on the climb. By the time they come over the end, they've hammered that wedge right the way through and split him off the group. Indeed, and this group is getting smaller, but it's still, <laughs> well, it might be getting smaller, but it's still a big group for Jassin Mare, X100, Knudsen are all in this group. So is Fawcett, so is Cutler, so is Safrazad. Uh, you know, this is a strong, strong group. Vidal Mare is still here as well, and they've just picked up one or two category two riders, and they are starting to work their way through that field. Christoph Thiem is the rider who never made the group. But that group now 10 riders strong at the front of that Category 1 race. So, time for us to draw a little bit of a breath on the way through. A packed race right the way through to the end of 27.5k for Category 1. At the top of the Eichenberg climb, it was Vujasin again with that fastest time. Now, one of the ways you can do that is by coming from the back of the group to the front of the group so if he goes into the climb at the back and then charges through uses what draft there is on a climb to go through towards the front he will set that fastest time despite not being the first over the top in that group so maximizing his points for that jersey on the way through practicing his racecraft and of course hanging on into this group as it goes through what a ride at the moment so we are in the little bit of a pause between the eichenberg climb and all the climbs before and the start of the Quermont climb at 36 and a half kilometers. Remember, this is a 45 kilometer race. Our riders spread out at the moment for about 33k across to that 28 kilometer mark. And as you can see from your screens, that First two thirds is where we have covered. We have gone through the Gen City Sprint, through the Kortakir Climb, through the Thiessen, Hover the Molden Sprint, over the Volkenberg, over the Eichenberg Hill that's not categorized, over the Eichenberg Climb, which is, we dropped off the other side, and we're on that little flat section in between. Coming up, Emma, we have three climbs, two of which are categorized. So we have the Quermont Climb, which is one big climb, 2.2K. We drop off that very quickly into the Paterberg climb. Now, this reflects the fact that the Paterberg in the outside world is quite short. And the Paterberg cobbles are short as well. Then it levels. And then we have that final kicker that comes in to the finish. This is a very, 
very hard finish. It is. Let's just take a look at this. The Cremont climb is the longest cobbled climb in the Tour of Flanders. It's 2.2 kilometres long with an average gradient of 4.2%. But take a look, it does kick because there is a flat level section before it kicks again. We then drop and we go into the Pattenberg. It is only 400 metres long, yeah, but it has a gradient of up to 12%. Over 12%. And, it and it's pretty consistent much is, all the ways. Well, it? let's put it this way. It pretty much is a 12% wall. Yep. It is a wall rather than a climb. And it is 400 metres long, uh, built by a farmer in, for the Tour of Flanders because he deliberately wanted the race to go through his farm. Uh, and so he had a good view. But uh, today it is going to be absolutely decisive. Now, I am going to talk about Strava segments on those two climbs purely because it's really interesting. Now, note here, there are many different segments on these two climbs in the real world in Strava. But the Quermont, Tadi Pagacha, three minutes, 55 seconds, an average speed of 31 kilometres an hour up the Quermont. Oh. Matthew Vanderpool, for those of you who are interested in watts, four minutes and nine seconds with an average watts of 522. They are world class. And we know, of course, we're talking Tuddy and uh, uh, Matthew there. The Pattenberg, Go on. Sam Gaze, 45 seconds, 933 watts. Now, <laughs> Sam, Sam Gaze is a personal favourite of mine. I have followed his mountain bike career phenomenally. He's his now road on career the, is amazing, isn't it? I know, but for me, he is a consummate short track mountain bike racer. You know, absolutely phenomenal on the mountain bike. And an and interesting skill set to transfer. It is. It really, really is. But that ability to kick out that amount of power for that short of time is what also makes him great on the mountain bike. And those segments give us a window on what we need our riders here today to produce what style now okay they don't need to produce as many watts as sam gaze for those 45 seconds you don't need to produce as many watts as matthew vanderpoel across four minutes or go up there as fast as Tade pagacha however you can see the relative style of riding that is going to be required for our riders on what is basically the same profile. So let's go across to our riders. We've got category one, two, three, and four on your screen. As you can see, categories three and four, the leaders in those categories are on basically the same climb. This is the Quermont climb, the category four approaching the summit, category three about 50% of the way up, and in fact, not far off the base are category two. Well, that's an all part of fighting it out neck and neck in category four at the moment as they come to the top of the Quermont. They've got a 15 second gap back to the chasing group. It's looking like in category three, there's a huge stretch on that race though because they have caught the rest of the category four pack. And I don't think it will be long until they are on to the riders in front. But it could well be Category 4 are going to come through the finish line at 45 kilometres first. We will see. This is that huge pack of Category 3 leaders who've gone through the big pack of Category 4 chasers. Now, as you can see, the pressure is on red chevrons across the screen. Kegel and Juki gone soling in there. Elos, Nogi, Eric, Quadrelli, Hoyosa, who's who? You've got this Montello in there. Tom Gates, Gretti, Kochikov. It's like reading the phone book. There's that many oh, no. names we in We said here. it was packed. We said it was a huge race field. And we said there was real quality in here. And it is splitting again as we come towards this slight levelling off. So we come up to the uh, plateau, the uh, shelf part way up, the platform, the landing, whatever you want to describe it as, whichever term is correct in your head, this is where it eases. 0.4, 0.5% gradient across here. And then it kicks again up to the summit of the Quermont climb. And that uh, summit, the ascent here, a total of 94 metres of ascent doesn't sound a lot, but with this continued gradient, it is very, very testing on the riders. Now, reforming as they come into the base of the last part of this climb, the group going across the road, they're waiting to see who is going to push. And this surely is where there is going to be an attack. This is the penultimate categorised climb. One rider starting to stretch the way off the front of the group now. They're opening a good gap here. I think uh, that is going to be. We're just going to try and take a look up in front. Emma's desperately uh, watching the screens here as we uh, look up the road. One rider just opening up a gap at the moment. And uh, yes, looks Ratto. to me, is that actually Ratto on it the front? It is indeed wow. by the look of it. 
So uh, a real big kit push coming at the moment, but there's a response coming because Sabata is there, Nogiero is there, Tom Gakes is there as well. They are pushing on and not letting that gap go. So the Cy Bradley is in the mix here too. So Nogiero, Ishmael Nogiero, we know he is class. We know he's really strong in this category three race field. They are pushing, they are pushing hard. They are nearly at the top. They can see the polka dot banner. They have just got to go over together as Daniele Ratto is the rider pushing on at the front. Five seconds is the gap at the moment. Can they make the catch? It's a big class field behind. They've got one big long descent before the final Pattenberg climb and then the run into the finish this is going to get really good come on Daniel this is where you've got to push one rider off the front he's got a tenuous gap it's a few seconds big descent and then a run for the finish can he hold on meanwhile back in category a one we've got a break up here in between two absolutely class riders michael nutson and saeed safrazad who are off the front of the group they've got seven seconds on Bujassin, who is leading the chaser behind and i say a chase i don't think this is a concerted chase in fact the watts are just hovering around about four to five watts per kilo behind and i think this is nutson taking a little bit of a march here he's tried to jump early as he go on to the quermont well they've got 600 meters before the climb starts and these two riders absolutely capable of riding away from the field over a hilly course nudson and safrazad are a danger for justin fawcett mayor kaminsky nair cutler martins have all got to do something now because with 10 seconds i think they can make this they need to either absolutely get together and work together or one of them needs to sacrifice themselves for the benefit oh. of everybody Else. If you've got a teammate here who you think has got good legs today, you need to absolutely ride as a team here because otherwise Nudson and Safrazad, it is theirs. It is. This could get very, very uh, difficult for anybody who is not all over the front of this race and absolutely marking it out. So on to the uh, Quermont goes the leaders in Category 1, Category 2. They're partway up. They're about to hit that levelling off. And I'll tell you something, Category 2 are destroying the field. They are dropping riders as well. And that shows you what this section that the riders in Category 1 are going to have to do. Because as we go on to this section, it's the first part of the Quermont. The chasing group are now having to answer a 12-second lead for the two leaders. And Vujasin kicks at eight watts per kilo. The rest of the bunch, though, are holding his back wheel with Tim Cutler, Michael Kaminsky, and Martin Martins straight onto the wheels. They're followed up by the rest of this race, Phil. Mr. X100 in that red helmet tucked in there as they come on. Ross Fawcett is nicely in this group as well. Will he be inspired by the Macclesfield Hills to climb the uh, ascent here at the uh, Quermont? Well, very similar profile. You can see the two leaders in front. Who Justin will know exactly where they are. He's got that time gap now. That gap is coming down. It's showing us eight to nine seconds at the moment. But remember, the speed of the front two riders will be coming off as we go on to that steeper section. We are at 37 kilometers of a 45 kilometer race. We're into the second part of the climbing in category one we are on the quermont climb this is tough stuff but they have got to make this count across on the right of your screens emma it's category four it is indeed and Allport and dadson well they have now got a 25 second gap back on to the rest of the race field the rest of the race field looking like they are pretty much all together as they're sweeping around that right hand bend behind them but Allport and dadson over 20 seconds clear at the moment they are at kilometer 43 they are on the pattenberg at the moment look at it it is so steep 13 and a half percent 13.7 13.9 14% at the moment. Absolutely a wall under their wheels. It's just getting steeper as they continue to climb 16%. So 16% the gradient. Uh, we will let you into a secret. The Paterberg in the outdoors and the Flanders fields doesn't have a tunnel. It's as nice as it looks. It is literally a very barren, boring farmer's field. 
And do you know what? It's much better here on my workshop. The scenery is better and the action is absolutely frantic as Allport continues to kick towards the banner. Look at the pain that is being shown here. You can see how hard this is. 77 revs per minute. Dadson's closing on Allport's wheel. The two need to work together. It's 10 seconds to the chasers. They've made the pattern, but they've got this a long, flat section through uh, town. They're going to make it through here around the uh, walls of the fortress. They're going to come along and then they're into the final kick for the line. This is uh, going to be interesting. They cannot back off now. They will get caught. They have to push and they have to keep working. Dasson, Allport, clear. The chasing group is coming. Well, Dasson and Allport are indeed teammates. They are both part and parcel of that Anzac's team with Scott Francis and Brett McMurtry. Uh, absolutely going to be, I think, one of the key teams in the final this month because this form from Dadson and Allport is fantastic at the moment. So side by side, Dadson and Allport, both from the Anzac's team pushing on. They've got 10 seconds. It's playing around that 10 second mark on the left hand side your screen Safrazad and Nudson have now got five seconds because Vujasin is pushing so hard we said at the start of the show Vujasin was on form and Lionel Vujasin is absolutely showing us the form he's got today because he is pulling Safrazad and Nudson back as Safrazad and Nudson decide it's time to kick again because they do not want him on their wheel he is a real danger and he's bringing Nair he's bringing Kaminsky he's bringing Noren it is absolutely close racing stay in all of our categories because this is Belgium. It's Belgium. This is the very, very hotly anticipated course by so many people. It's the one that really shakes it up and boy, has it shaken it. And yet we see familiar names at the front of our race of Phil showing that they're great all around us. Now we've got a real classic pursuit. This is proper classics racing we've got two riders coming in at 600 meters to go with what is a 10 second lead can they make it will they be closed down by the bush behind will it be heartbreak on the line this is the final kicker emma can he make it well it's all port versus dadson at the moment they are teammates they are 10 seconds clear but it's coming down because pino rodriguez echeverry montoya warren they are fighting behind and they are fighting the charge as Allport continues to push. He's slingshotted himself forward from his teammate Dadson as he sweeps round and he can see almost the finish line now. He's going to take the left-hand bend and then he's going to sight that banner. And that banner is going to bring him to the finish, but he's still got around 250 metres to hold this. Can Dadson hold off the chasing group and take second? That is going to be the question because Montoya is coming really fast. Montoya has kicked at 11 watts per kilo. Luke Olport is clear at the moment. He's got to get through that banner though. Can they make it with the pace that is coming from behind? So Olport is going to take the win today in category four on the My Wish Sunday race club. The pack come hard behind. Montoya, Dadson, who took that? It was Montoya from Etcheverry from Dadson. The pack caught second place so they did indeed catch second place but what a ride out the front there Allport holding on to keep the win as we come into the citadel here we go through the many port colors is adorned by the belgian colors our next race group coming in with one kilometer to go are going to be our category three leaders they are on their way. They've got 1,000 meters. They're on the right of your screen, left-hand side of your screen. We're keeping an eye on category one. And Nudson has got Safrasad for company, but nobody else. Vujasin's chase. I think he was a little worried. He got Mr. X100 on here. And I'll tell you something, Lionel Vujasin will not want to go down to third place because he didn't pull them back. Very, very tough decision for him to make in the next few kilometers. He'll want to have this decided before he comes in. But we're in the category three finish. Caigula is the rider we are in with. But this is going to come down to a big group sprint across the bridge, across the moat of the Citadel, underneath the portcullis and underneath that yellow banner. The portcullis in that gatehouse is the brown roof. You can see to the left of the riders. They're on the way, and at the moment, Daniel Rato, he's got a gap. 
He's got four seconds, but that doesn't mean anything. And we have seen that in the category four race. Oh, Tom Gates is coming nearly eight watts per kilo from behind. Can he close this down? We saw them close it down in category four. Gates has kicked. Has he kicked early enough? Because Stano and Villa have gone as well. Villa's kicking, so is Kane. And Kane's got a huge sprint on him. Daniele Ratto is sweeping round. He can see the yellow bend, but they are coming. They are coming thick and fast. I think they're going to get him, Tom Gates, but Kane, who's going to get this Kayan goes over the top he's got a phenomenal sprint Villa's coming Villa's coming Villa Villa who took that that was phenomenal it might have been Dyduch it might have been Villa it might have been Kayan Dyduch I think is being given the win there by Bert Kayan phenomenal sprint in category three so many riders back in a so small space across the road there. Absolutely frantic stuff. Now, we are in with Category 2 on the right-hand side of your screen. They are on their way up the Paterberg. They're approaching the top of the Paterberg. That is the polka dot banner that they're about to go through. Then they'll go through underneath the gatehouse, under the portcullis, and into the citadel. Left-hand side, you can see on the tunnels, on the descent uh, down and across the traverse into the base of the Paterberg comes Nusson and Safrasad, currently six seconds Sorry, nine seconds to gap to Norum. We've got Henry East actually sandwiched in between a Category 2 rider who has been distanced from the lead group. So at the moment, it's going to be Safra's It's going to be Norum. Then you can see uh, it's going to be Mr. X100. They're leading their respective groups. So Nuts and Safra's out together. Then Norum with a little bit of a gap to Mr. X100. And I think Lionel Vigestin is saving everything for that final climb. There on the left of your screen, right-hand side, though, we're approaching the 1k to go a marker for Category 2. Well, let's just take a look. Daniele Ratto, who led that Category 3 race into that finish line, was dropped down to ninth with that pack coming over the top. So, nothing is for certain yet. But this <laughs> wall that is the Pattenberg is indeed what is under our riders' wheels at the moment. And Category 1, well, they're at 43.1. Category 2 are at 44. There's 900 metres separating these two race fields. It's going to be Category 2 that come into the finish first. But Nudson and Safrazad are pushing on. Vujasin, your right, Matt, has dug deep again. It's at 9 watts per kilo up the climb. So is Fawcett. So is Nair, so is Kaminsky, and so is Martins. It is not over yet in that Category 1 race. We've seen four seconds wiped out in the space of 50 metres on the final run to the line. In our other categories, will it happen in Category 1? What will happen in Category 2? There's no deficit to wipe out. This is going to be a group sprint to the line. Remember, sweeping left-hand bend. The riders can see the finish in front of them behind the gatehouse as they come around the left-hand turn. We're in with Mendakowitz, and this is going to be a massive, a massive kick required to come out of this group. They're winding it up early here. Arengo's going to lead this out. Here they come. Well, Arengo leads it out. Orlando, Ospina, uh, Mendakowitz, Gates, Graves, Van Heat are all in there. Graves is at the back of this race field. Is he going to use the draft to come up and over the top? Who's going to kick first? Well, actually, Graves is kicking a little bit here, but Orlando's gone at seven watts per kilo. Ospina's at six. They've still Still got 200 metres to go. There's the banner. Here's the kick. It's, wow, it's Angarita who's gone. Phenomenal numbers from Angarita. Arengo is responding. Can Arengo make it? Mendakowitz is there as well. But I think that was Arengo. Arengo, I think, takes that from Angarita, from Mendakowitz, from Graves, and then Ospina. What a ride. What a sprint. So close as they came in. Now, back to category one. We love it when they come in separately, all spread out like this. We get to cover every single race finish coming in. And this is going to be an intriguing one. The gap has been smashed to pieces as they came up the Pattenberg. These two riders have shown they are a class apart today. Nudson and Safrasad. Will Michael Nudson make it two out of two? Will he get himself honorary residency in Belgium as the man who has taken a 100% record when we've come to Belgium here? He's kicking. He's kicking hard. Can he take this away? I think Safrazad is settling. 
for second place, but the Butch is coming hard behind him. He can't relax too much, but Michael Knudsen on his way on the left-hand side. Well, Knudsen is on the form at the moment, and he's pushed hard. He's gone with Safrazad, and then he's broken clear. Knudsen is absolutely class today. Safrazad, I think, is in danger behind because the group are coming really, really hard. So Knudsen comes around. He's going to see the yellow banner off the finish line. Michael Knudsen is going to take the win, but it's going to be close because they are coming so fast behind. Safrazad is coming, but Knudsen is going to take the win. Can Safrazad hold on for second? So Jassin has gone over the top nearly. But I think it's going to be Knudsen from Safrazad, from Fujassin and Martins. Kaminsky is in the mix as well. Fawcett's gone through to X100, now coming towards the line. So Mr. X100, great ride by him on a course that was not uh, that touted as suiting him. I'll tell you something, that is a great ride by him. And Joran Noren, after working so hard, is even further back. What a race here. Michael Nusson, he is the king of the castle here in Ghent. He came into the Citadel and uh, sprinted through. He finishes 3.575 seconds ahead of Said Safrazad, 7.9 seconds ahead of Lionel Vujasin, who led the chase. So Vujasin has a bronze and a silver. If we were giving medals out in the uh, Citadel in Belgium, what a course. What amazing racing. Don't forget the results at the moment are live. They're updating as we speak. And of, we will, of course, uh, look forward to seeing those that have been turned into unofficial results when all of our riders make the way in. So if you are out on course, keep on kicking. It's worth it when you come through that finish line. You can catch up with all the results on mywoosh.com slash results. And remember, of course, they will be verified at the very end of that process from a live to verified. It has been an absolute blast being back in Belgium for the My Wish Sunday Race Club qualifier race number three. My name's Matt Payne. You can catch up with me at Matt Fixer Payne. Emma, have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, it's been amazing. And congratulations to Arengo, Dutch, and Allpot who took the wins in the other three categories. Yeah, brilliant riding by them. Where can we catch up with you on you social media, Emma? catch up with me at Biking Emma on Instagram. Please do get in touch. Uh, let me know where you're racing. If you're on holiday like Ross, or Ross Fawcett this week, send me a picture. Let me know where you are. So we look forward to those that are coming in. Make sure you jump onto the My Wish social media channels. But all that remains for me to say is make sure that you join us next week for qualifier race number four of this five Sunday month. That means that we've got lots of great racing for you. Subscribe to the channel. We love bringing you the action. We couldn't do it without the amazing team behind the scenes at my wish. A massive thank you to them, to our riders for putting such an amazing race on. And of course, to you for watching. Come and join us next week. In the meantime, you can always catch us up with us and catch up with what we're doing on our social media feeds. It's been a blast this weekend on the women's and men's race. But today, for now, no more words. Not really. It's great to see you. Stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.